Space is filled with a ton of cool things like international space stations, stars, electric vehicles, planets, and almost a complete void of oxygen. If you happen to breathe oxygen and work for an agency interested in space exploration from one of those planets, this could be a huge problem for you. As it turns out, in 1989, this was exactly the case on a planet called Earth for an agency called NASA. You see, around this time, there were two main problems NASA was trying to solve in order to make its space program more efficient, supplying oxygen and removing air pollutants. In order for astronauts to be able to go to space, they have to bring oxygen tanks with them or find ways to make oxygen. Bringing oxygen means needing extra fuel to get to space and making oxygen requires energy. So finding alternative ways to produce oxygen would mean there is more energy for other important things like cooling, communications, and taking space selfies. Even without this problem, there is still the issue of removing air pollutants, which also uses energy and could lead to less space selfies. NASA had already taken steps to reduce the amount of pollutants coming from the materials on its spacecrafts. But this didn't exactly solve the problem because human activities also create air pollutants. If they're not dealt with properly, they can severely risk the health of the astronauts on board, something that is bad because the space ambulance and space hospital hasn't been invented yet. With this in mind, NASA turned to plants. Enter the Clean Air Study. To test out plants' ability to clean air, NASA ran a sort of flawed experiment, at least in the context of proving plants clean air. In this experiment, NASA put some common house plants in separate containers, but they also added a fan and an activated charcoal filter. Activated charcoal filters are useful when trying to remove pollutants from the air. The idea is that the fan will quickly pull air through the filter and pollutants will get trapped behind. The plant roots could then absorb these pollutants into their tissue. The results unsurprisingly showed that plants had the ability to clean air. So if this is true, why isn't NASA using plants to clean the air on its rockets or in the International Space Station? Well, also unsurprisingly, when you use a filter to filter air, it filters air. I mean, it's not rocket science. Or maybe in this case it is, I don't know. Either way, this doesn't exactly show plants can't clean air either, just that the combination of these things cleans air. And of course, this isn't exactly how we keep plants in our homes, so it's not really useful for determining if plants should be used to clean air in our homes. Fast forward to today, and this study has been greatly misunderstood to the point that there are tons of articles across the internet showing plants do clean air. There are even articles showing which plants are better than others, and those that point out plants don't clean air but suggest to use them anyway. To make it worse, these articles almost never have any source backing these claims other than the gold standard randomized control study known as Because I Told You So. But poor air quality in the home is no joke. Poor air quality is one of the largest causes of mortality globally, so it's important important to ensure our air cleaning strategies are actually cleaning the air and not just making our insides happy. So I decided I was going to test this out for myself in my own home. But to do so, I wanted to create my own air quality meter. The only requirements were the air quality meter needed to give an overall picture of air quality rather than monitoring individual pollutants. And I wanted it to work with Wi-Fi so I can download and check the results. To make this happen, all I had to do was get some plants, learn coding, build a clear box, well, two actually, and learn electronics. Easy. After truly an unreasonable amount of time of trying to build an air quality monitor instead of just buying one, I finally had a working product. If you want to see how I did it, you can check out this video here. It's actually not as difficult as you would think. I put one air quality meter in the box along with the plant. In the second box, I put a second air quality meter, but no plant. This allowed me to track the air quality in a mostly sealed off space that had a plant in it versus one that didn't have a plant. Basically, the results showed that plants have a very limited ability to clean air. This was true even with two plants in the box and with the use of a grow light. In fact, according to my study, you would need over 500 plants in a room that's just 10 feet by 10 feet with eight foot ceilings just to improve the air quality by 20 parts per million, which is almost nothing. Surprisingly, this makeshift experiment had results that was actually consistent with some other research studies on plants in buildings. The only possible exception to this was a plant nursery that I visited, which had much better air quality. But your home is not likely to have this level of ventilation or this many plants unless you happen to be a furry forest animal. So if you're not a furry forest animal, or your home isn't coated in activated charcoal filters, you'll want to use more efficient strategies for cleaning the air in your home. Opening windows, air purifiers, and removing sources of pollutants are a great place to start. However, they say you cannot fix what you cannot measure, or something like that. So, if you're looking for a recommendation for an air quality meter, you could check out our video on how to build one, or you could check out the Air Things View Plus down in the description. While you're down there, you'll also find more on using activated charcoal in your home, air quality, and more. 
If you're interested, you can also sign up for our memberships to learn more about my experiments, including the plant experiment. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.